Hello everyone, this is Codmates and today we will talk about how to make yourself a difficult opponent to play against. If you want to become a poker player against whom it will be very difficult for other players to play, then the easiest way is to race before the flop with a wider range than just premium hands. This will make your game harder to read and your opponents in turn will make more mistakes. In general, you win in poker because your opponents play poorly. If your opponents find it difficult to put you on a range of hands, they will play worse against you, compared to those who play straightforwardly. I do not suggest you start bluffing at every opportunity, but rather I suggest expanding your strategy, opening up with a wider range of hands, so that you can give yourself additional chances of winning the pots. Open raise from early position. Many beginners raise only with premium hands from early position when other plays fold to them. Instead of raising only with the best hands, I suggest you add some weaker hands to confuse your opponents and provide the best board coverage, that is, more flops can potentially connect to your range. Know that with the above tight raising range from early position, it is difficult to make nuts on flops containing medium or low cards. You should have at least some potential to make the nuts on the flop, or a hand that can be aggressively played post-flop, such as straight draw or flush draw, which your opponent will not expect. You should not make it easier for your opponent and allow him to turn all your potential hands into bluff catcher by simply raising the flop. Instead of raising them from an early position with a tight range, make a raise with a range that is shown in this image when everyone falls in front of you. This range contains a lot more suited hands, including middle suited connectors and a few more pocket pairs. Adding these hands to your range gives you the opportunity to make the nuts on different flops. Know that if you raise only with high card hands, it's impossible to collect the nuts when the flop comes with medium or low cards. This wider range is called a better board coverage. Open raise from middle position. Here is my loose raising range from the middle position when everyone folded in front of me. From middle position, you should start adding suited aces to your raising range, because they will give you the opportunity to make more nut flushes and sometimes you will stuck your opponent with a worse flush. You should also add some more hands with high cards. Know that this loose range does not contain weak high cards and medium cards, such as a7 offsuit, king 10 offsuit and jack 8 suited. These hands almost always need to be folded from middle position. For example, queen 10 offsuit is extremely unprofitable to play from these positions because there is a possibility that you will find yourself under domination when you're called. If you look closely, you will notice that many other tight players raise with such hands from most positions because they think that all hands that contain two high cards must be good. It's important that you distribute hands properly during the game when expanding ranges. Usually you should add to your range hands that connect well with the flop not hands that form a top pair or middle pair with a marginal kicker. Open raise from cutoff position. Here is my loose raising range from the cutoff position, the place to the right of the button, when all players folded in front of me. When approaching the button, you can start raising with many worse hands. This is because few people will have a premium hands and there are fewer possible opponents who will want to exploit you. For example, when you raise from the hijack position, the place to the right of the cutoff, cutoff and button can re-raise you, make a so-called 3-bet, putting you in a difficult position. From the low jack position, placed to the right of the hijack, you should also worry about the hijack. As your position improves, you can raise with a wider range. Open raise from button position. Here is my loose raising range from the button position when all players folded in front of me. This may seem like an overly wide opening range, but it's justified because you will often win the pot right away as soon as both blinds fold their hands. When one of the blind calls your preflop raise, you will often win the pot with a c-bet, when the caller cannot improve his hand on the flop, regardless of whether you have improved your hand or not. Raise sizing. I strongly recommend that you raise the same sizing with all your hands, regardless of their preflop power. Although I understand that many beginners make big raises with only some hands, because they are afraid that they will be beaten, and this is a terrible mistake. These large protective raises in fact reveal the strength of the hearts to all the opponents and show them that you have the hand that needs protection. Instead, make a raise of the same sizing with all your hands to hide the power of the hand. There are two main points when you have to adjust the size of your preflop raise. The first point, if the stack size decreases, you should raise a smaller size on preflop. 
Roughly speaking, with a stack of 100 big blinds, you have to raise 3 big blinds. With a stack of 50 big blinds, you have to raise 2.5 big blinds. With a shorter stack, you must raise 2 or 2 and a quarter big blinds. The second point. If the players on the blinds belong to world-class players, then you usually have to raise a little more than usual, perhaps half the blind more than you usually raise. This is because you do not mind if these players fold their cards. Of course, opening with a wider range of hands in the hope that your opponents either fold preflop or fold to seabed postflop only works when you open with a raise. If you limp, just call the big blind. Other players will limp as well, and you will lose the advantage of being the aggressor. Thoughts about lose preflop range It's worth noting that on average in the long run you will win or lose a certain amount of money with each hand. Your task is to figure out how to play the maximum possible number of hands in a profitable way. Know that if you expect to break even with this hand in the long run, then it's quite reasonable to play this hand, even if it drastically increases your variance. By adding break-even hands to your range, you'll see more losing aggressive, giving yourself the opportunity to win a little more often when you're lucky enough to get a premium hand. By playing break-even hands, you make your premium hands more profitable. It's important to understand that the above-mentioned loose preflop ranges must be significantly tightened under various circumstances. It would be a huge mistake to just print the charts and blindly follow them. You can see that I mentioned above only the middle position range and not the UTG plus 2, UTG plus 3, plus 4, low jack and high jack ranges. This is due to the fact that the ranges for these positions should differ significantly, based on your assessment of the trends of players who have yet to act. You must pay attention and find out how your opponents will react to your aggression if you want to win as much money as possible. You need to make your range loser win. You are in late position. When approaching the button, you must raise with a wider range. The players who have yet to act, in particular button, small and big blinds, are tight. Recently, you were too tight. If opponents expect you to be a tight player, you should be inclined to raise with a wider range, especially with hands containing a blocker. Raise with a blocker. A blocker is a card that reduces the likelihood that your opponents have a premium hand. On preflop, aces and kings are the best blockers. Know that if you have ace deuce, then the probability that each player who has yet to act has a pair of aces decreases by 50%, and the likelihood that they have ace king or ace queen is reduced by 25%, compared with a situation where you don't have an ace. This is because the presence of an ace in the hand indicates that there is one ace less among the remaining cards, and the likelihood that another player has an ace decreases by 25%. Please note that the concept of blockers also applies on postflop. For example, when you have a pair of nines and the board is jack 8 7 2 3. With a pair of nines in hand, you realize that the likelihood that your opponent has a nut straight with 10 9 decreases significantly. Example. Everyone falls to you, you're in the hijack position with ace of clubs and nine of spades, blinds 50, 100, anti 15. You decide to make a standard raise of 2.5 big blinds, that is 250 chips. If someone who has yet to act makes a 3 bet, re raise, you can safely fold, believing that your opponents play fair and straightforward. If only one player calls your preflop raise, you can see bet about 3 big blinds, about 50% of the pot size, on the flop giving yourself the chance to win the pot if your opponent doesn't improve his hand. If you're in late position with tight players who still have to act and your image is too tight, you can raise with an incredibly wide range. Maybe you should open even 100% of your hands. This is because the tightest players will continue to play against your raise with only 14 best hands, and that is in 6% of cases. When these three factors come together, being in late position, playing with tight players who still have to act and having a tight image, you can cross the line as much as possible. Conversely, when you're in early position with specifically loose players who have yet to act, you must play extremely tight. Let's look at another example. Everyone falls in front of you, you're with a stack of 59 big blinds on the bottom with 7-4 offsuit. It's known that both players in the blinds play a moderately tight strategy. This is a great spot to make a raise of 2.4 big blind. If any of the blinds decides to 3-bet, you can safely fold. If one of them calls, you can safely play post-flop. If you choose the right spots, you will find that you steal the pot most of the time pre-flop with a relatively small risk. 
Although stealing the blinds may not seem like a big victory, but if you steal more blinds than your opponents, your stack will constantly grow, while your tied opponent's stacks will constantly decrease, because they are awaiting premium hands. Example. Blinds 200-400, anti-40. You have a king-jack offsuit and you're in second position. The player in the first position folds. Although the king-jack offsuit as a rule is a good hand, here you need to fold. There's a high probability that someone who has yet to act has one of the playable hands, most of which dominate you. By raising, you either steal the blinds or you will be forced to play with a marginal hand, usually without a position. Despite the fact that the fold may seem to be a tight decision, this will be the right choice. From early position, you have to cross the line much less often. Well, that's all. I hope you understand everything. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Did you like the video? Then I expect likes and subscriptions from you. See you soon and good luck at the tables, guys!